This is Valley News Live at 5. We're starting with a developing story tonight. A local construction company has abruptly shut down, leaving homeowners with unfinished projects and several employees without a job. Customers trying to reach the stud, trying to reach studs to rugs through email receive an auto response saying, quote, Effective immediately, studs to rugs is closed for business. All questions will be answered by legal counsel in the coming days. Multiple families have contacted us at Valley News Live saying the company stopped responding to their calls and emails late last week. And a former employee we spoke with says he isn't expecting to get a paycheck from the company. Um, the hardest thing was is just, you know, everybody's coming to work and we got called in for a meeting and everything, we just told that everything was getting shut down. Wasn't um, wasn't sure if we we're going to reopen back up or um, exactly what was going to happen. Uh, it was devastation to all of us. We've reached out to owner Tim Rosine, but have not heard back yet. Tonight on Valley News Live at 9 on the Fargo CW and Valley News Live 10 at 10, we'll hear from one of the families impacted by the abrupt closure and see the unfinished work that's left them out of tens of thousands of dollars. Every 12 seconds, a woman is being beaten in this country. Every 12 minutes, one of those women is killed by her abuser. Those sobering numbers are being highlighted today on UND's campus. Valley News Team's Ryan Laughlin tells us why men and women need to step up to make a difference. Every time that bell goes off, a woman is battered in this country. It's an impactful, impactful program. That's what you hear when you take in the clothesline project. T-shirts hanging in the UND Union designed by victims of abuse across North Dakota. I think it's, it's sad that we have to have a program on this, but I think it's important. The goal is to raise awareness, break stigmas, and to encourage others to be proactive. If we don't believe someone can give consent, whether that's because they've been drinking, they're underage, or whatever it may be, it is vitally important that we step in and we say something. Because if we don't, if we sit in silence, we could allow something terrible to occur. In this room... 400 stories where something terrible did occur, but hope that by sharing them, they can prevent more shirts from going on the line. From Grand Forks, Ryan Laughlin, Valley News Live. This year, a brand new part of the exhibit focuses on Native American women who have been abused or killed. The problem has also been recognized on the national level. U uh, North Dakota U.S. Senator Heidi Heitkamp introduced the Savannah Act earlier this month. The federal legislation is aimed at protecting Native American women and girls from violence, abduction, and human trafficking. It's named for Savannah Greywind, the pregnant Fargo woman who was killed and whose baby was taken earlier this year. Tonight, a program starts at 7 p.m. at the Union with speakers and music. Everyone is invited, and the night concludes with the Take Back the Night march down University Avenue. It's gusty out there and looks to stay that way for a while, certainly into this evening, right Hutch? That is correct. We have gusts that have reached over 40 miles per hour, one of the areas of strongest winds from the Grand Forks area into the James River Valley where we have seen those 40 plus mile per hour gusts and it remains breezy this evening and cool with those mid 50s out there, but colder air is on the way even this evening. We are seeing some sprinkles out near Stutzman County on the radar, but these will be short lived. The wind will not. We'll have gusty winds over 25 miles per hour all evening and overnight long as temperatures slip into the 30s for many of us. And as a heads up, stay tuned for details on a flaky forecast through Wednesday, which could be the warmest day of the month. We have a good chance of some Thursday morning flakes. It could accumulate for some. I'll have the latest on that as well as our weekend outlook here in just a few minutes. A little concerning that <laughs> it's, forecast for later in the week. It's bound to come sooner yeah, or later. I know, I know. Thank you. You're welcome. And remember to like Valley News Live on Facebook. You can follow the latest news, weather, and breaking news updates anytime on your feed. Just search Valley News Live, like our page, and you'll stay informed throughout the entire day. The Red Lake County Sheriff's Office is looking for the person who hid some pipe bombs near a hunting cabin in Equality Township. That's located just northeast of Oakley, Minnesota. Police say yesterday morning they got a call that some bomb making materials were found in the area. When police arrived, they found several bombs in a container that was hidden in a rubble pile. They called in the Grand Forks bomb squad to disable the bombs. If you have any information on this case, the Red Lake County Sheriff's Office is asking you to call them at 218-253-2996. 
Law enforcement in Stutzman County have now brought in the second of two fugitives they were searching for last week. They say 24-year-old Janessa Ryan was arrested today by the Jamestown Police Department. She was wanted for failing to report after being sentenced to prison time. Authorities also arrested another man they were searching for last week. They're thanking the public for help in bringing them in. A developing story tonight. Two months have passed since a Detroit Lakes teenager was last seen. Friends and family still have no idea where he is or if he's safe. Parker Eastman was last seen by his family the night of August 21st. His mom says she woke up the next day to find her son's cell phone in the toilet and he was missing. In late January, Parker told his school counselor that his stepfather had beaten him, which his mother says caused Parker to suffer from mental health issues, and he may have become upset after a change to his treatment plan. Friends believe he could be in the St. Cloud area. If you have any information on the missing boy, contact Detroit Lakes Police or your local law enforcement. U.S. Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl will now wait until Wednesday for the start of the sentencing phase of his military trial. Bergdahl arrived this morning at Fort Bragg, North Carolina for his sentencing, but the judge said he needed more time to decide on a defense motion to dismiss the case based on comments made by President Trump against Bergdahl. Bergdahl has pleaded guilty to desertion and misbehavior before the enemy for abandoning his post in Afghanistan in 2009. The sentencing phase is expected to last several days. Bergdahl faces up to life in prison. President Trump is eager to get tax reform through Congress, but to get to it, he needs the House to move quickly on a $4 trillion budget proposal. Mola Lenghi has more details from the White House. People want to see it, and I call it tax cuts. It is tax reform also, but I call it tax cuts. It'll be the biggest cuts ever in the history of this country. President Trump is pressuring House Republicans to quickly approve the Senate budget plan passed last week so they can move on to tax reform. During a conference call Sunday, the president told lawmakers, we are on the verge of doing something very, very historic. President Trump dispatched his daughter Ivanka to Bucks County, Pennsylvania to tout the tax reform plan at a town hall meeting. The total complexity that exists today only benefits one group of people, the people who can afford to hire the armies of lawyers and accountants and lobbyists. Getting tax reform through Congress won't be easy. That's why the president is making a trip to Capitol Hill Tuesday to meet with Senate Republicans. This plan stinks. Democratic leader Chuck Schumer is putting pressure on Republicans in some swing states because the tax outline calls for an elimination of deductions for state and local taxes. State and local deductibility is a dagger aimed at the heart of New York and particularly of so many of our middle class residents. Republicans say the loss of the deduction for state and local taxes would be eased by a proposed doubling of the standard deduction. Mola Lenghi, CBS News, the White House. California, New York, New Jersey, Illinois, Texas, and Pennsylvania claim more than half of the state and local tax deductions and would be hit the hardest by its elimination. Today was the first day for members of a newly formed task force to come together with ideas to make the FM diversion work for everyone impacted by the massive project. The 16-member group, organized by the governors of Minnesota and North Dakota, includes elected representatives from both states and residents in both states who will be affected. Upstream residents are suing over the project because they believe there is a better plan that will not flood private land. And a federal judge stopped construction last month because the project does not have the necessary permits from the Minnesota DNR. The group has a December 15th deadline to come up with recommendations.